Hello, my name is Julie Ann Friend and I'm the Associate Director for International Safety and Security at Northwestern. My duties include identifying and managing risks associated with university-sponsored travel, reviewing international insurance coverage agreements, and most importantly for you, assisting students who have a health or safety problem abroad. Today, I'm going to go over some of the most important aspects of having a safe and healthy study abroad experience. First, let's talk health insurance. As you know, Northwestern requires all study abroad participants to have an HTH Worldwide insurance policy. You should have already purchased it, or you should purchase it prior to your departure. There are exceptions for students going on programs that also provide HTH coverage. They will enroll you in HTH as a part of their pre-departure process, so you don't need to purchase it through Northwestern. Now, if you're unsure about that, contact your program advisor to check. Also, if you're studying in your country of citizenship, you are not eligible for HTH and should utilize whatever coverage is available to you as a citizen of that country. For all other students who haven't purchased their HTH policy yet, instructions on how to buy HTH are on our website and in the pre-departure guide. If you haven't already, once you've enrolled in HTH, be sure to forward the email confirmation you receive to studyabroad at northwestern.edu. Now, let's talk about immunizations. Do you know if there are any required or recommended immunizations for the country or countries you're going to? If not, you can find this information on the Center for Disease Control's website. In fact, the CDC has a special portal for Traveler's Health where you can type in your destination country and see a list of recommended and or required vaccines as well as any current health alerts. Should your destination re recommend or require immunizations, say for yellow fever or prophylaxis medication, say for malaria, it's important to discuss these options with a medical professional. As soon as you have your travel itinerary set, including any additional trips to other countries you plan to make before, during, or after your study abroad program, you should make your appointment at least eight weeks prior to your departure, as some vaccines are administered as a series and thus require multiple visits to the clinic. Be sure to print out the relevant pages from the CDC website as well as any related program information to take with you to your appointment and share with the nurse or doctor. This will help them provide you with the most accurate advice related to your travel plans. Now, let's talk about pre-existing conditions. Lots of people have pre-existing health conditions. Most of them are mild and are easily controlled by medication, therapy, or in some cases, a selective diet for things like food allergies or gluten intolerance. But even common conditions like diabetes, depression, or asthma can be more challenging to manage abroad due to changes in environment, climate, food and water, etc., even increased stress. While abroad, it's critical to maintain the same level of vigilance to tending your health needs as you do here at home. If you need to bring prescription medications with you, be sure you bring an ad adequate supply in the original labeled containers in your carry-on bag and with a note from your doctor explaining the dosage. Don't have medications mailed to you because this is illegal in a lot of countries. Remember also that some commonly prescribed medications used to treat conditions like ADT or depression may be restricted in other countries. Make sure you know the laws of your host country and talk to your doctor about alternative medications. And since you, you don't know how managing your health condition could change abroad, it's important to talk to your physician about your travel health plans. He or she will help you develop a medical management plan in case you face complications abroad. If you know right now that you will require medical services abroad, please contact me to arrange a conversation with a member of the global health team at HTH Worldwide. HTH just doesn't, doesn't just pay your medical bills, you know. They are available to research health facilities abroad and make appointments to help you manage your health needs. So if you need to continue your therapy or your allergy shots or just have your blood glucose checked by a doctor, it can all be arranged by HTH and they're open 24-7. 
Of course, I also recommend that you disclose any serious pre-existing conditions with your resident director on site in case they need to assist you with a medical emergency. Finally, even if you don't have any pre-existing health condition, all travelers benefit from developing healthy habits abroad, such as drinking enough water, eating a wide variety of foods, and getting adequate sleep. Travel is stressful for the mind and the body, and this can weaken the immune system. It's not uncommon for students to get a cold or the flu within a few weeks of arrival. Despite your desire to want to see and do everything while abroad, take time to rest and recuperate if you do get sick. Finally, let's talk about what you do if you do get sick while you are abroad. For non-emergency care, like a routine office visit for strep throat or the flu, you have three options. You can work with on-site staff to help you locate a physician and arrange an appointment. You can call or email HGH's global health team to arrange an appointment. Or you can use the doctor search function on the HTH website and make your own appointment. For non-emergency medical care, be prepared to pay for the treatment, but save all your receipts. When you return to the U.S., you can seek full reimbursement. For emergency care, go to the nearest hospital and have a companion or an on-site staff person call HTH on their 24-7 number as soon as possible, so HTH can arrange for direct billing. This way, you won't have to pay anything when you are discharged. If you are in a location where the quality of health care is suspect and your need is not life-threatening, you can even call HTH for a facility referral. Now don't worry about writing down all of these details. Just remember that these instructions are available on the Study Abroad website under the Health and Safety section.